What's up, YouTube? I know it has been quite a while since I've posted. Honestly, I've had a lot of things going on in my life where it's been a little difficult to make videos and I apologize. Every time I say I'm gonna do it, things tend to get in the way. Right now, <clears throat> I don't even have a vehicle. I haven't had a vehicle in months um, due to shortages, chip shortages, all that kind of stuff. So things have just been a little difficult. But I did get some comments yesterday and I just want to address some of those comments because I understand that uh, people are concerned and, and I really appreciate that I do. Um, so I'm going to actually start with the ferrets today. I'm going to be doing a video updating you guys on each different animal. Um, so it'll be one for the horses, one for the ferrets, one for the fox, one for the dogs, everything and so on and so forth. So I'm down here in the barn. It's heavy. We've had storms today, so they're inside. They're usually out in the arena, but in the storms I like to keep them inside so I'm gonna start with the ferrets <clears throat> I have upgraded them they're doing awesome by the way so let's check it out so as you know I keep them in my tack room and I do have a fan in here and an AC because it's Florida and it gets hot but let me turn on this light so we can see so I just disconnected the fan because it's very loud um, and I want to be able to say what I need to say and you guys can hear me so first off um, I upgraded their playpen. They get um, each set of ferrets. Well, I can't say each set, but my females get two hours of playtime a day, roughly two to four hours, and then so on and so forth. Um, and I do have some kind of upsetting news about one of the ferrets that I did have. Um, so I'll just fill you in with that. So I also just uh, turn off the radio because I don't want to get any copyright. So moving on to the females. Here are the females. Here's Mocus and Boglarka here. And as you can see, they have their beds down here, hammock, two litter box trays. Um, one here is usually water and then two different food bowl trays that they get and then one water bottle as well. So the girls are here. And so what I usually do is I come down here in the morning and I grab them and then they go into their new enrichment area here. And let's grab Mo. She still can be a little bitey, but she's okay. She's getting better. And so they go down here and I usually leave them in here for like I said, two to four hours. It just depends on my schedule. So they get to run around. Um, this is a play pen by Clearly Love Pets. We just upgraded it because the other one I agree was too small and honestly they'd escape from it. So I would always be worried about leaving them, you know, um, unsupervised and uh, I don't want them to get out. I had did have that happen a few times and they were kind of running around here unsupervised and that scares me, so. There's that. Um, also, I just turned the AC off because that's loud too. Um, and then we have River here and he's on top again. He's got his litter box, his hammock, one for water, one for food, water bottle. So, and there's River. And then down here is Doppler. He's got his own section too. Um, I can't put him with anybody um, unless it's the females during breeding time. They can't go together, they fight. And then same with Doppler, he's a martial ferret. If I put him with them, they'll fight as well. So I kind of just have to space it out between everybody. So nobody gets hurt and everybody is safe. So again, um, he won't drink out of a, like a water cup. He just won't. It'll end up just getting bedding and food and stuff in it. So he just drinks out of a water bottle. But you can see he has a tunnel, his litter box that he destroyed yesterday. And then I usually put blankets down here and um, a hammock and bed and whatnot. So that's everybody. As far as the mongoose is getting enrichment, <laughs> they do come out of here, guys, I promise. They don't stay in here 24-7. Um, with them, I do kind of just let them roam around. They won't get out. They honestly, if I leave their cage open, they'll just come and go as they please. Um, but when the ferrets are out, like right now, I obviously have to keep them separated because they're wild mongooses and they won't get along with the ferrets too well. 
So that's how everybody is doing in here. Um, I have everything kind of set up here, cleaning supplies. Um, I usually have an extra bag of litter, but I'm out. Um, I have cat food here, which they get as a supplement food. And then he will not eat raw no matter what I do. So he has um, Wysong in this jug here. So there's that. Um, and then I have my refrigerator here, which I'll show you, is stocked with uh, raw food for the mongooses and the ferrets. And this is basically um, uh, chicken hearts, chicken livers, um, some bone meat. Uh, I think in this one, I also have um, chicken breasts. I kind of mince it up in a meat grinder so that they can eat it easily. Uh, my mother-in-law puts cooked chicken in here as well. And then down here, I have apples for the rabbit as well. So, and I usually have fruit up here for the mongooses, but Publix run today. So. Um, as for now, I'm going to leave the girls out to play in their playpen for a couple hours and then I'm going to put River in here. And um, the exciting news is that Bug Larka is actually pregnant. So we just bred her. I know, Mama. <laughs> so she should be expecting a litter on April 20th. So we're excited about that. And then the unfortunate news is you guys know I had two Marshall ferrets. And about, I want to say it's been a few months. It's, it's definitely been in between me posting videos. I had the Marshall ferrets up at the house and uh, the cage that I had them in, I will put a link down to it. Um, I would definitely encourage everybody not to buy this cage. It was a horrible cage. My other ferret, Fuji, actually got loose from it and she got out of the cage that was in my house. She got into the laundry room and through the dryer vent and I never saw her again. Um, I looked, I looked and where we live there's coyotes and all kinds of stuff so uh, yeah she's she's been gone for a long time so i mean I, I feel terrible that he's alone now and he doesn't have his his girlfriend but i'm hoping with the babies coming that um they'll be young enough where i can at least keep one and you know have them together so that he's not alone because i feel bad for this guy here Gabby. So he gets extra time out as well. Um, I actually do take him to work with me as well. Um, lately though, I haven't been working. I don't have a car. So things have just been kind of rough. Really buddy, I know. So um, yeah, everybody's doing good. And this is this is their room. Um, it's, it's all theirs. <laughs> Mo. Mo. Hi, Momo. <laughs> pretty girl momo she jumps at me i know you little panda girl i know i know yes so yeah they have their tunnels in here and like this one here stretches out but they kind of always move it and then there's like a little cat thingy here and whatnot and they're actually used to pull all this down with the other playpen that i just kind of put here so now they can't pull on all my tack and stuff so this is a much better playpen guys i highly recommend it it's, again it's by clearly love pets um, a lot of people use them for dogs, but um, they're per it's perfect for ferrets. And I got the large. They are on the expensive side. It's definitely an investment. Um, very expensive, actually, this playpen. <laughs> Not cheap at all, but totally worth it if you want to give them plenty of space and playtime. So um, that's what we've been doing. Um, yeah, like I said, nobody stays in their cages like that uh, constantly. I, I feel terrible that, that you know people see one video and they, they think that's what I do. And that's not the case. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do this uh, for each set of animals. Um, other than that, the dogs are doing great. Um, Sansa, the fox, she's doing great. Um, everybody is healthy and alive. <laughs> and uh, we're just missing one, one Marshall ferret. Um, but like I said, we're hoping that Bug Larka has a successful litter and, you know, she's good. I have my vet on standby. She knows that Bug Larka is expecting and... Um, we're hoping everything goes well. This is our first go around. <laughs> so as you can see, they get their time and they get to play. Um, once Bog Larka is closed, so the week before April 20th, she will come up to the house um, in a breeding setup, which I have not set up yet or I would show you guys, but it's gonna basically just be a small breeding cage with um, a nesting box for her to have her babies and then a litter box and a feeding station. Um, I'm in a, a connection and I speak to a lot of the ferret people in the community and the other ferret breeders in this country and they've given me a lot of great advice 
Um, so um, I'm pretty, uh, pretty prepared for this <laughs> and pretty excited. So Mocus, she, um, she's doing well. She has not come into season. We probably won't breed her this go around since this is our first go around. I don't want to overdo it. I want to make sure our first litter goes well, um, which is Bob Larka, so. <laughs> So yeah, they get their playtime every day. And they're, yes, I know Mo, you're so cute, Mo. <laughs> I know, you used to, they, see they, in the old pen, they knew how to get out. So they're just trying to figure it out. And we've only had this pen up for a couple days. So now I know that I can leave them down here and they'll be safe and I can come back in an hour or two. And you know, they'll usually be sleeping. Yesterday I came back and they were just kind of sleeping in this thing together and then I just switched him out and put River down here and so everybody gets out. I'm also excited that uh, you know the, the boys will have some other playmates as well and we have plenty of room for it in here so um, whatnot but we won't we won't be keeping all the babies. We have a email set up it's riverranchferretry at gmail.com if you're interested in a baby ferret then you can email me for an application um, our screening process will be uh, an extensive one we are not just going to rehome them to anybody that wants a ferret and are new time ferret owners um, you have to have some experience you have to have the setup your family has to agree with it um, you have to be okay with feeding raw these guys only eat raw um, I used to feed them the store-bought stuff but that's been over with for quite a few months now hey don't shoot that <laughs> So no, we feed uh, exclusively raw, like I said, chicken hearts, um, ground turkey, um, some rib bone meat, like, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, look at this, she's going to ruin it, she's going to ruin it, <laughs> that's all right, that's all right, but um, yeah, they, ex uh, everybody's eating exclusively raw, including the mongooses, everybody's on a raw diet. Uh, so you have to be okay with that. Um, and you also, uh, like some of the concern comments that I got, you have to have um, enrichment. You know, the ferrets, they shouldn't be in cages 24 seven. They need time to come out and play and have fun. And so that's what we do. Uh, I was trying to think, is there anything else I didn't cover um, as far as application goes? Um, yeah, if you have kids, you have to put that down in the application. Um, uh, yeah, my ferrets won't go to just anybody, especially these guys. They're not, you know, they're not martial ferrets. They can be bitey. Um, it took Mocus a few months for me to even be able to pick her up without getting bit, um, which is okay. It's just something that, you know, we deal with and we work through, which like you saw, I just picked her up and she's fine. When I do go to pick her up from the playpen, if she hasn't had enough time, she'll get kind of nippy, but Boglarka's perfectly fine. She's great. She hasn't bitten me since the day I got her, honestly, and River too. Right, Riv? <laughs> so they're, they're pretty good. But um, Mocus, yeah, she's doing she's doing really good with that. Um, so we're we're excited that uh, that she's expecting and and we'll be able to provide some quality um, ferrets that'll live a long time that are very healthy. Um, everybody will come with shots. Everybody will have uh, be vetted. Um, we'll also do birth certificates for them so you'll know when they were born, um, et cetera. I will be filming this and I will be documenting this whole thing. Um, as far as when videos get out, I just don't know as of right now. Um, like I said, life's rough. Um, my husband's changing careers right now. So that's been number one on our, on our list. That's another reason why I haven't been posting. And uh, again, I have no truck. So it's actually kind of good for the animals because I have a lot of time that I'm not working right now to spend with them. But as far as making videos the time is just has not really been there i used to edit videos at work um i am the gm at my company so i would you know be able to do that sometimes but right now my daughter being in school and just everything going on my husband changing careers it's just been a little difficult but i am going to get this video out today um just because i logged in and saw some really concerned uh people commenting on stuff and just just worried about it uh so i figured i'd at least start updating you guys on that and on how everybody's doing <laughs> and uh yeah i mean everything's going good uh, i will talk about the fox real quick um i'm not gonna film there back there today it's pouring um 
so I don't want my camera getting ruined, but um, yes, the Fox enclosure, actually what had happened was, is the top had caved into it months ago when I had first built it and, and did that video. So I had to redo the whole pen. Um, I actually have two pens for her now. One is her main, and then one is another one where I put her in to clean the one that I'm in, that she's in, or if it needs any repairs, that's something I ran into where I didn't have another place to put her while you know cleaning her pen or doing repairs when things happen um especially in florida you know we get storms and things break you know you gotta constantly be updating stuff and whatnot um but uh yeah everybody's doing really well and she's very happy and the dog's pen obviously is amazing um i will switch over to the dogs just uh, about maybe three or four days ago Django got a bullfrog um, late at night and I check on the animals religiously make sure everybody's okay multiple times a day and I did notice that he was feeling pretty sick um, luckily it wasn't too bad and he's doing much better he's still in the house um, recovering so Django's been inside with us and he hasn't been in the dog run but everybody else is pretty much doing really well I I'm actually kind of scratching my head as to how he even got a frog because when we designed that dog pen we chicken wired everything so well so that toads could not get in the enclosure so and then the night it happened it was also about 49 degrees here in Florida so usually toads don't come out when it's cold like that so the whole thing was just kind of odd um and with it being so odd I decided to um install cameras back there so that's going to be done this week because I also you know people can be very vindictive and I don't know exactly if it was a frog or if somebody maybe threw some poison over the fence in my, where I used to live, that would happen, where people would throw stuff over the fence. And even though we're on a private property and we know everybody here that lives around us, they're pretty much family, I don't think that anybody would do that. So I kind of jumped the gun and said, you know, it was a toad, but again, you just don't know. So with that being said, we're gonna put cameras so that if anything like that happens again, we can see exactly what, what the problem was and what the culprit of it was, um, because we don't want anything happening to anybody. But Django's okay. He recovered just fine the next day. Um, I honestly couldn't even take him to the vet because I don't have a vehicle, but he didn't need vetting at that point. He was standing and doing fine. He just looked like he got a little bit of toxins. Uh, but you know, he was drinking and standing and he just kind of looked like he had a couple beers. It was just very, very odd. So again, I don't even know if it was a toad because Texas in the past got a toad and I had to rush him to the vet. He was on the brink of death. So again, I don't really know exactly, exactly what happened um, and what he got into, um, again, which is why we're gonna install cameras. Uh, and also down here, we're gonna put some cameras um, down here because we just don't know for sure. Um, so the plan today is these girls will be down here for a few hours and they'll play in their playpen and um, play with all their toys and stuff. and. Then I'll come back down in about a few hours and I'll put River down. And then a few hours after that, I'll put, uh, uh, excuse me, Doppler in here. And then usually at around 8 p.m., everybody goes back in their cages, they eat dinner and that's it. And then we do the same thing the next day. Oh, and then as soon as Doppler's done before eight, I open the cage here and these guys just run around. Um, like I said, they don't really even leave their cage. <laughs> that much they'll kind of run around here and by the time that I come back they're back in their cage so the mongooses are great um they really don't they're not as mischievous as far as like breaking out as the ferrets are amazingly they're just not <laughs> um actually there's been a few nights in the past where the cage here didn't lock all the way and they were out all night running the tap room and I come back and they're just sleeping in their cage. So the mongooses are great. So they have this whole tack room to run around and I've never had an issue where they even messed anything up, jumped on my saddles, chewed anything. They're, they're really good, good guys, um, good pets to have. So um, in the past, I never used to put straw down here, but I do now um, just so they have a comfortable place to lay. They don't do well with blankets. They kind of just throw them around and don't use them. So. And uh, you guys made a mess. I just cleaned this yesterday. <laughs> you guys made a mess. You made a whole mess. So they really like this. So of course, when I finally go to do these videos, my phone dies and yeah, then I had no storage and that is just my luck. So 
you guys saw how the ferrets were doing. They're doing great. Um, I will film the dogs and the foxes and the rabbit. I was going to show you the rabbit in this video, but again, I had my phone die and whatnot and storage issues. I had to go delete stuff. So that's just where I am at. So that's how we are doing with the ferrets. Yes, they have plenty of time out. Yes, they have plenty of enrichment and they're getting fed raw and everything that you'd want to do um, with your ferret and all that is good stuff. So just a quick update video, go ahead and leave comments below. Um, if you are um, in Florida, I don't know if we'll be shipping baby ferrets. This is our first time um, with baby ferrets. So I don't know what's gonna happen yet. Um, but if you live in Florida or you wanna travel here and you're interested in a baby ferret, um, you can follow River Ranch Ferretry on Instagram. I do updates there. And if you are interested, you can email me at riverranchferretry at gmail.com for an application. Again, it's an extensive screening process, so um, don't be surprised. There's a couple pages you have to fill out. Um, we also have a little disclaimer that talks about raw food and everything that I covered. So I hope that you guys enjoy this update video. I'm gonna go ahead and post this today. I know it's been a long time. I know I've been saying this, so this is just gonna be a quick one to kinda um, recap everything. So, and then, Django is right in his. <laughs> so Django's in here with us, um, recovering from whatever he got into. I'm not sure, but he's he's doing good as you can see. <laughs> so Zelda, come here. Zelda. I had another comment a couple months back asking about Zelda. So Zelda is doing good. Are you doing good, Mama? Yes, you are. You're doing so good. I know. So Zelly's in here, she's always in here with us. So everybody's doing good guys. And I promise I will do as much as I can with the circumstances that I have. Um, it's just been hard right now with um, no vehicle and we sold one of our other vehicles. So we're just kind of in a rough spot right now. And again, I haven't been working either. So it's just kind of been hard. And with my husband's career change and school and my daughter, it's just been a little difficult, but I promise I will do more. Look, I look like, 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 like just a hot mess. Can't you guys tell? I just, I'm like a hot mess. Um, I haven't even filmed in so long and I keep looking over here and I should be looking over here. So again, forgive me. It has just been a long time and things have been rough, but we're going to get into back into it. I promise this channel isn't going to go anywhere. Um, I just need to prioritize and get things going and put my life together and put Zelly's life together. Man, man, it's like pouring outside. It's pouring outside. You don't wanna go out there. You're gonna go out there and you're gonna turn right around. <laughs> so I would prioritize and this channel won't go anywhere. Thank you guys for like, I haven't even signed in to look at comments in so long and I just signed in and was like, oh my gosh, people are commenting, saying any news and whatnot. And I just felt bad and I felt compelled to go down there and just make a quick one. So I appreciate everybody that has been so loyal and so nice. And even when they are criticizing me, they're still being nice. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, and I always take constructive criticism. I hope this puts the one person that did comment on my videos at ease. And I hope that you guys understand that um, everybody is very much loved on this property and we try to do our very best. So again, go follow River Ranch Fair Tree if you really wanna see uh, more updates. I don't post there every day, but I try to post a little bit of what we're doing. Um, and then obviously a Pax journey on Instagram. I don't post there every day either, but I'm gonna get back in the swing of things and um, hopefully we can turn these negative comments around to positive ones. And honestly, I don't even find that your comments are negative. I just find that you guys just really care and, and um, I really do appreciate that. So thank you guys for watching. If um, you are new to this channel and this is your first video, go ahead and subscribe. Like I'm so, I really am. I'm sorry that I don't post often, but we're gonna try to change that around. So. Thank you guys and stay tuned. So probably in the next week or so, I'll go ahead and do an update on the fox and an update on the dogs and so on and so forth. And the bun, I was gonna show the bun in this video, but my phone is dying, so I wasn't able to, but he's happy and healthy. And you know, as we can see, we keep uh, stuff in the refrigerator for him every night. So go ahead and subscribe. Please don't give up on me and don't give up on this channel. We're gonna really make this work. All right, guys, until next time. All right, Sally. I know it's not intelligent, drinking for the hell of it But that's irrelevant, now we should talk about us How come we're holding on, cause really I don't see the benefits now And you're broken my trust, so I just wonder
Why do I fall back to you? Really nothing I can do about it Why do I fall back to you? It's like you're a drug to me, I can't quit It's not like we're still twins 